Pray that your name is written down in glory. Amen? I love that old stuff we used to sing. I like the new. Some of it I don't understand, and I, don't, I have a hard time following, but I like it. Amen? I have some goals. How many of you are goal setters? Are there any people here in the house this morning that are goal setters? There's times we set short-term goals, amen, long-term, personal, career, retirement. Uh, some of them we set ourselves. How many of you have had your doctor set a goal for you? Yeah. <laughs> Dale's doctor, can I just going to tell? He said no. She she's, thinks he's doing great, and she said, so this, when the weather's better, you'll get your steps back up to 10,000 a day? And he said, yeah. Now he can't find his thing. That whatever that thing is, it tells you. We never, we never counted our steps. We just went. Anybody remember the good days where you didn't count your steps? You just went somewhere. And when as kids, we just did what we did. Amen. There was no counting steps. Sometimes your employer will set a goal for you. Things they want you to accomplish and reach in a certain period of time. And today, as uh, your pastor and your leader here, I'm going to help you set some goals. Now, it's up to you if you want to, but I'm going to line them out really simple for us today. And um, I want us to remember, we're never too old, and it's never too late to set goals in your life. So it's important, and uh, it, will, it will change your life if you set the right goals. Amen? Father, we ask you today, Lord, that you just challenge our hearts and our minds, Lord. God, I ask you, stir us up. Take us from casual and comfortable to stirred up in the right direction, that we have healthy goals for our soul today. And we give you praise in Jesus' name, amen. In Proverbs, the 8th chapter and the 17th verse, this is such a simple one. It says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Isn't that easy enough? I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Now, if you were a note taker, I'd have you write down two goals out of that one scripture today. Love God and seek God. Isn't that, see, sometimes we get, over, we get overwhelmed because we're trying to figure out how to do it all or how to make everything happen correctly or the right way, or are we doing it? Start with these two simple goals. Just simply love God and then seek God. Are those easy enough? I, I'm, this is group yes. participation today. Those are two easy goals for us. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, and I want you to keep those two thoughts. The ninth chapter, we're going to read verse 23 and 24 this morning. But I want you to keep those two goals in your mind that for you this week is just love God. Don't worry about the details. He's got those anyway. Just love God to, and seek God this week. It'll change your life. Amen. Jeremiah 9, we're going to read verse 24 and 25. But let him that glorify glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness. Oh, whoops, I started wrong. Let's go back to 23. I knew that wasn't right. I've got a goal to do better tomorrow. Today, right now, verse 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth Glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Amen. Those are another set of simple goals for us today. We don't want to glory in the things that we accomplish ourselves. We don't want to glory, it says, in our own wisdom. I put a little thing, and I don't care if you follow Facebook or you don't, but it stuck, struck me funny. It said, for the guy that thinks he knows it all, who's ever, how's he going to ever know he doesn't know it all? Does that make sense? 
for the guy that thinks they know it all, how are, who's going to tell them? No one. That just made me smile this morning. So, But we don't want to glory in our wisdom this morning. We don't want to glory in our own strength. And we don't want to glory in our riches. We want to glory only in Jesus Christ. Only. Let him that glorifies do this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. So we don't want to get carried away in verse 23, glor glorying in anything that's not appropriate or anything that would not please God. Our highest priority and our highest goal that I want to set for you today. I don't know if you like me setting your goals. If you don't, tell me afterwards, would you? And we'll visit. But I'm going to do it anyway today because I'm up here and you're out there. <laughs> my highest goal for you, my highest priority for you, each, every individual in this house, is that you know God and that you live a life that reflects his character. We've been studying in the book of Romans the uh, leaning to the flesh versus leaning to the spirit. We don't want to have fleshly character. We want to have character that reflects Christ. Amen? And the more we reflect Christ, the more effective we are in our community, the more effective we are for our families and our neighbors and our friends. We want a life of knowing God. And we want to live a life that reflects his character. Are you guys willing to take that goal this morning? Yes. It's a good goal. I'm setting them out for you. I'm making this pretty easy. I'm making your list of goals for you. Amen? The goals. To know God more. And the second goal, and I've written another goal. I've got this in little stages. Another goal that I've written down is to surrender all. Do you love that song, I Surrender All? Surrender is a funny thing, isn't it? Sometimes we'll surrender the things that are easy to turn loose of. But the hard things or the things that are hidden deep in our heart, we'll kind of just latch on to them and we'll hang on to them and you're not going to fool God. You will not fool God with the things that you're holding on to in your heart. But I want to reach a position of surrender all. There's many times, and I'm far from perfect, and when I share my experiences with you, I'm far from perfect. I don't walk perfectly. I have my moments. But there's many, many times, and I'm praying, I lay down at night, and I pray, and I talk to the Lord, and I talk to him in the morning, talk to him when I don't sleep between two and three. But I say, Lord, if there's something in my life you don't like, just show me. Take it. I'll, I'll surrender it. And I'm open and honest with him, and I expect him to answer me. I expect him to, to pour back into my life and say, Connie, you don't need this, or you don't need that. You don't need this attitude. I want to encourage you. There's some things that I've written down today. I do my own surrendering, and you'll have to do your own surrendering. But I would encourage each and every one of you, if you battle fear or doubt, surrender it. Be done with it. Just surrender it to the Lord. Say, Lord, you know this fear and doubt troubles me on a regular basis. Just take it today, Lord. It's yours. And I'm not going to entertain it anymore. Amen? Amen? Sometimes we have to surrender the unknown. Anybody have any unknowns in your life? We all do. We don't know tomorrow. We don't know what our tomorrow holds. So surrender the unknown because it's out of your control. It's in God's hands. And the more you surrender these things to the Father and the more you trust him, the more content and the more happy you will be. Amen? Sometimes we have to surrender our health. Sometimes we have to surrender our finances. I think this is a hard one for me. Sometimes I have to surrender my relationships. Because I have anticipation of what I want them to be. And maybe the other person's not there yet. Maybe God's working in their heart. Maybe I just need to let it be. So surrendering relationships that may be a little awkward or strained or are hard. 
And this one, I think, is the one that we can all agree, whether you nod your head yes or you don't. Sometimes I can read your faces. Sometimes I try not to make eye contact. <laughs> Surrender your future. It's not in your control. Set good, healthy, godly goals in your life and then be willing to walk out your future because you're not walking it alone. God is holding your hand every step <laughs> of the way. But see, sometimes we are so, any, I'm going to ask, I always pause, any, any controllers in the house? Mm -hmm. I am, uh, if they have, what is it, instead of AA, Controllers Anonymous, CA, I would go to CA Anonymous. Controllers Anonymous. I've tried to control things that I've had no control over. And I'm going to share something with you. When you. The more you try to control a situation, the more miserable you will be. And let's take it a step further. Whatever you're trying to control, and if it involves, you, when, as a mama, it's your kids when they're younger and beginning to do some things. You make yourself miserable, and you'll make the situation miserable. We are not in control. God holds our future. We do not hold our future. It's held by a loving God. And the beauty, see, when we're trying to control something, we see this, what's in front of us. And our, is it peripheral vision out this way? We can see, but we really don't see the whole picture, do we? But Christ does. And the more we surrender that need or that desire, the happier we'll be. Let him take care of all that other stuff. It's in his hands anyway. And if he could create this world, Dale said he's going to work today. I'm going to tattle. I just like to tattle on him sometimes, you guys. I'm with him six days a week. You guys get him a few minutes, so okay? We've been working. He's been really diligent on a project, getting our motor home taken out from when it's winter rest. And he sa I said, what are you going to do this afternoon? And he said, oh, I'm going to work on the motorhome. And I said, I think we should rest. Anybody agree with me? <laughs> it doesn't matter. He'll do what he wants to do. But listen. Oh, Cody, Casey's giving him. It's okay. Do what you need to do. But look, I'm bringing a point here. Listen. If God can set all of this into existence in six days, what are you going to do worrying for one afternoon over something that you are not in control of? Really? What are you going to do? Do the things that you can do that need to be done. Take action. Don't lay on the couch and just wait for God to zap something. Do the things that are in your control and then leave the rest of it in God's hands. Amen? So if you drive by and he's outside, he's, he's not resting this afternoon. Leave your future in the hands of a loving God that created all of this. He set it into motion. He knows the human heart. He knows the soul of man. Trust him with that. So I want you to know God more, and I want you to surrender all. I don't know what your all holds, but I know God is capable to take care of all of us and all of the things that are in our all list. Amen. Turn with me to John 13. Or John 17, 3. I saw that 3 there and just went with it. John 13, 17. I need rest. John 17, 3. I have a final goal for you. I have quite a few goals for you today. So anybody make to-do list? You know, I have to because if I don't, I forget. And... Um, a to-do list is a goal. It's a short goal. My to-do list when I go to the grocery store is a goal. Like I come home with what's on my list. I said to somebody this morning, if I don't go home with a list, I go home with a candle. If I don't take the list to the store, I'll go home with a candle and some stuff that there are no value. Right? And then I'm like, well, what's for dinner? I don't know, but I got me a lilac candle waiting in the wings. <laughs> Anybody? Come on. Write some goals down at your house today. Lay them on the kitchen counter. Put them on the fridge. John 17, 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, 
the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. This is my final goal, is that we know Christ this morning. That each and every one of you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Number one, eternal life with God. That's a, that's a result of having this goal, is we have an eternal life with God. The next thing is we, we get a personal relationship with God. Amen? I'm not into pro sports much. I watch a couple things here and there now and then. But the chances of having a personal relationship with a pro athlete are pretty slim. And most of them I wouldn't want a personal relationship with. Just, just calling it like I see it. But to have a personal relationship with the Father, there's room for all of us. Not just a couple, three of us here get to have that relationship. But each and every one of us is responsible for our relationship with the Father. So we get a personal relationship. There's an importance in this goal of relationship with Christ this morning. Is that we repent of our sins. Amen? And I don't know how you roll, but let me tell you. Sin will raise its head up in your life. Little things will come into your life. Little temptations, little attitudes, little things that are not pleasing to the Father. Repent of them and just simply, Father, forgive me. Forgive me. And then when you've repented of your sin, turn away from your sin. Amen? Sever it. Be done with it. Don't, don't take it back up. Don't lay it beside the wayside thinking, I might come back to that later. Just, just let it go. Repent of your sins and turn away from your sins. My goal for each and every one of us today is that we know God and that we surrender all. Amen. I think that's easy enough for all of us to say, I can do that. Because sometimes when you're reading in through the Bible and there's things that we don't always understand, some of the theological things and some of it, to be honest, bores us and the begats and some of those things. We don't have to understand every detail, but if we can understand the power and the importance of knowing God. Amen? I'll tell you, when you can establish these day-to-day -day goals in your life, you're going to enjoy a life with Christ. And the Holy Spirit dwells in you. He dwells in each and every one of us, and it will position you to enjoy a life in Jesus Christ. Because being a Christian is not a miserable existence. It's an existence of freedom in Christ. You may be going through a miserable situation, but you do not have to be miserable. Amen? So we want to enjoy our life in Christ, and we want the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. Amen?